Now, what is well control? And why do we uh, say that we need well control? Who can answer me? Why do we pay money for training for IWCF or IADC? Why? Like this, randomly, or there is benefit of it? Who can there answer me? There is there benefit. benefit for that. Yes, what is the benefit, uh, Mr. Rashid? Benefit, uh, we, to, we have to know the, if we have any anything to, how to know to control. And uh, avoid the, uh, anything. So. Anything is happening. Look at this photo. Do you know? Do you want us to be in this situation or not? Not sure. Of course. How can we avoid such situation? Look at it. How how can we avoid it? If if we if we uh, follow up the right instruction and uh, the rules proper. Excellent. It's not being happened. Excellent, excellent. If you follow the right procedures uh, that are uh, put uh, in the oil and gas industry, who is responsible for it? There is uh, something we call it IOGP. What IOGP? International uh, Oil and Gas Producers. Right? Yes. This is uh, an association. Uh, this is uh, direct, uh, directing uh, the uh, oil and gas uh, practices and who is executing these uh, in Europe we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, company we call it IWCF what does it mean IWCF international international weight control forum and in USA in Texas we have IADC international association of drilling contractors if you don't know it please write it down uh, always uh, take a pen and paper and write uh, whatever new for you. So in Europe, we have International Well Control Forum, and uh, this is located in Scotland, in UK, and the other one in America, USA, it, it is located in Texas. We call it IADC, International Association of Drilling Contractors. Uh, these two companies or associations are taking care of what the uh, procedures that have to be implemented to avoid any incident. What is, what is this incident? Uh, do you guess what is this? Is it in the Gulf of Mexico? Macondo? Deepwater Horizon, right? Yes. Yes, excellent. Uh, who knows what is the uh, Macondo well incident? This is a mistake by the permit to work, I think. Permit to work, yes. Yeah. Uh, DSV and the excellent, excellent. So what was the result of it? The result is, uh, I, don't, I don't remember how many people is uh, yeah. was uh, died. Uh, you can write, 11 people died. 11 people, yeah. Yeah, uh, 82 days of continuous flow of the well. 82 days. There was a huge contamination for the environment, for the Gulf of Mexico, uh, for uh, uh, the fish, uh, for the people, for uh, the uh, agriculture, for everything. The company that was working there, uh, there was BP with uh, another uh, American company, I don't remember its name. They were, there was partnership between them. So there was much loss so what can we lose if this happens with us what can we lose there will be damage to the environment right to the equipment to the, person. to the persons ah this is number one you are right persons environment equipment to the assets to the reservoir oil and gas what else to the company reputation Am I right? Company reputation. So if you do, yes. if you have company and you do incidents every day, every day, every day, who can, can, who can trust you with your company? Nobody, right? 
So this is company reputation and so on. In addition, you have, uh, if you make a problem as, as a company, you have to pay too much co uh, money to the, what, uh, to the uh, parties who were injured or who, uh, who have uh, uh, damaged uh, from uh, this incident. So too many things can happen. In this case, after this incident, there was uh, too much uh, emphasizing uh, by IOGP, International Oil and Gas Producers, uh, and they enforced IWCF and IADC to uh, uh, put more strict procedures uh, to make sure that people are trained, uh, to make sure that uh, the, such incidents will not happen again. So this is our aim from the course. So we need your attention, please, uh, just to know uh, that we are not in a game. This is real. We have to protect our lives and we have to protect the life of others. The equipment, the company, uh, they trust us uh, and uh, we have to be uh, worth of this trust. So no, uh, no careless, uh, we have to take it seriously. So this is the summary of it. Now, let us uh, move on uh, to the principle of oil control. We have golden principle. What is this golden principle? We have to imagine this one. I will uh, change uh, this. Good. We have to imagine that we have like here a tiger. I can say a tiger or a lion or any, anything can damage us. And we drill ahead from here to here. What will happen in this case? If we don't control this one, if you stay in a garden and you have a lion and you are face to face and you don't know how to control it, what will happen? It will eat you, right? And here we have high pressure in the reservoir. What will happen to this pressure? It will attack us. There will be an influx from the reservoir to the bottom hole. And this influx will develop to be as a blowout. So this influx from the reservoir to the bottom hole, what do we call it? We call it inflow. If you write it down, please, these uh, expressions should be known by you. So the inflow is the flow of fluids from the reservoir to the bottom hole. And we have outflow. What is outflow? The flow of the fluids, wellbore fluids from the bottom hole to the surface. So the inflow will develop to be as a blowout. Is it clear for this one? Clear. Now, you tell me, but how can I protect myself? How can I protect the well? Using something we call it barrier. Barrier. What is barrier? It prevents the risk from me. But it, it, uh, we put it between me and it. So this barrier, this is called mud, drilling mud. This one. This is called a primary barrier, right? So this primary barrier, we uh, have mud weight. So this mud weight should be controlled at all times. This mud weight should be controlled at all times. So we are always over balance. What does it mean over balance, under balance, and in balance? Who knows it? Who knows uh, what does it mean? Over balance, under balance, in balance, and how do you drill your wells? Over balance or under balance? Over Excellent. So hydrostatic pressure that is affected by the mud column is equal to the formation pressure. You are right. This is imbalance. Same, same. Aina. Right? But if the, the hydrostatic pressure from the mud is more than the formation pressure, what do we call it? Over? Over balance. Excellent. Excellent. This is good. Uh, but if the hydrostatic pressure that is affected by the mud column is less than the formation pressure, what do we call it? Under balance. 
and the excellent. This is good. So this comes in the exam. He asks you, uh, this is underbalanced or overbalanced or like this. So you tell me now, but how can I calculate the hydrostatic pressure? Do you have API formula sheet or not? Yes. You have it. If you go to number one, please. This will stay with you in the exam. This formula sheet, four pages. Make sure that you, do you have it, Hakan uh, Very nice. Yes. If you go to uh, hydrostatic pressure, which one? One or two formula? One. One, excellent. So hydrostatic pressure equals TVD times constant, which is 0 0.052 times density. Density in PPG. TVD in foot. Hydrostatic pressure in PSI. So you don't need to memorize it. All uh, we have, a 29 formulae, you have it, and you know, you need just to apply it. We give you the numbers, and you apply these numbers. That's it. There is no, to, uh, no need to memorize it. So hydrostatic pressure, now we know uh, how much is it. Equals TVD times 0 0.052 times mud weight, density, PPG. Now, if I give you the pressure gradient. What is pressure gradient? Uh, which one? Number two formula? Yes. For what? Number two. Yes. Number two. Uh, hydrostatic pressure, how much does it? Density times 0 0.052, right? Yes. If you can add also a pressure gradient for the fluid uh, times 0.433. Excellent. So these, we have to uh, use them in our calculations. So till now, uh, there is no problem. But this, uh, this is related to the TVD also, hydrostatic pressure, right? The hydrostatic pressure is related to TVD. So the TVD, the, uh, what does it mean? The height of the mud column, the height. So imagine that you have losses. What will happen to this level? Will it drop from here to here, right? Yes. In this yes. case, if you apply hydrostatic pressure equals TVD instead of 9,000, it, it is 6,000. What will happen to the hydrostatic pressure? Will it drop down? Decrease. Yeah, decrease, excellent. If it decreases and it becomes less than formation pressure, what will be the situation? Overbalance or, uh, or underbalance? Under, in this case, what will happen from the formation kick or inflow? Kick yes, kick. This, this kick will develop to blow up. This, we don't want it. Clear now? Yes. Excellent. Now, you see this one? Uh, what, uh, or the, uh, what is a kick? You see the kick? This is the kick. What is a kick? It is an influx of formation fluids. You see? Influx of formation fluids. These ones. You see it? That causes the well to flow. That causes the well to flow. This will reduce the hydrostatic pressure on the bottom hole. This. Because the influx may be gas. The gas density is same as mud density or less? Much, much less. The density of gas is much, much less than the mud density. Am I right? Yes. Excellent. In this case, if it, this is this one, the uh, density is this. What will happen to the bottom hole pressure? It will be more or less? It will be less. Why? Because the, the density here is less. If you, if you see hydrostatic pressure equals TVD, TVD is constant, times 0 0.052 times density. The density here of gas is much less, right? In this case, bottom hole pressure will be less. In this case, we convert from over, overbalance to underbalance, right? In this case, there will be influx. 
this influx will develop to blow out if we don't control it. Let us see. You see, this is a blowout. What is the definition of a blowout? A blowout is an controlled exit of the formation of fluids at the surface. You see it? Uncontrolled exit, exit flow of formation of fluids where at the surface. This is the definition of the influx. So, if you have, look at here, if you have here this gas influx, this one, big, instead of 5 barrel, it is 10 barrel. Then the possibility of getting influx is higher. Clear for you? We have to avoid that. Now, this is the, what? The blowout. This, what we are here, why? We are here to avoid such situation because it will make kill us, may damage everything. Then, what is this? This is the Macondo Way or Deep Water Horizon in the Gulf of Mexico. This happened in 2010. 11 people killed, 82 days of continuous flow of uh, about more than 5,000 barrel per day from the way, more than that. So you can say uh, millions uh, of barrels, maybe uh, uh, I don't know exactly how much uh, flowed into the Gulf of Mexico, but it is a huge. What did they do? They drilled two relief wells. You know relief well? I drill here and here and uh, dr uh, drill uh, what? Uh, deviated well. Till I reach to this well and, uh, and then I can pump uh, heavy mud uh, and can stop the flow. I think you have seen this before, right? Very nice. So, we talked about hydrostatic pressure. Uh, Mehmet Bey told me hydrostatic pressure. What does it, but what does it mean hydrostatic? Hydro means a fluid, right? Fluid. Static means rest at the bottom. So the pressure at, of the fluid affected by the fluid where at the bottom of the well or of the tank or whatever. So you see this is tank. So at the bottom of it, we have here fluid, we have a pressure. This is the gauge of the pressure. You see it? Affected by the mud, which is in the tank or in the barrel or in the well or in the casing, whatever. So this is the meaning of hydrostatic. Now, you, t you ask me, is there a relation between pressure and density change if the TVD is constant? Look at the TVD. How much? It is 5,000 feet, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah but now, uh, same, same, exactly. But look at the pressure. I see it here. Uh, say uh, 1, 2, 3, 1,500, this one. But this one is 2,000. This one is 2,500. Why is this change? Look at the density. 10 ppg, 11 ppg, 12 ppg. So if the density increases, what will happen to the bottom wall pressure? Increase. Exactly, because HP equals TVD. TVD is constant. Times constant, 0 0.052 times density. Density of the mud, it is increasing. You see it is increasing. So what will happen? Hydrostatic pressure will increase. Look at it. Is it clear, my friends? Yes. Excellent. Now, suppose that the density is constant. You see it? 10 ppg. This one. This one, this one. Suppose that it is constant. But the TVD is increasing. What will happen to the pressure? Increase. Same, same. It increases also. You see it? So the relationship is clear for you. Very nice. Now we have 
uh, hydrostatic pressure we have this we call it uh, as if vertical well this one you see a standard formula with uh, foot ppg and psi so this is number formula number one you see it mud hydrostatic pressure equals constant times mud weight times tvd or depth so the depth is in foot the mud weight is in ppg the pressure is in psi the constant we don't need any unit this is number one with you so there is no need to memorize it here this one and this one 0 0.052 times mod weight it is pressure gradient pressure gradient you see it we have it in psi per foot this is formula number two with you right mr rashid yes excellent now we have these if you have this is the main formula this one pressure equals mod weight times 0 0.052 times tvd can you get uh, and this is the pressure gradient this one this it is known for us this one but now can you get the pressure gradient from this formula this one so pressure gradient equals pressure divided by tvd this one right it is clear now mod weight from here equals pressure gradient divided by 0 0.052 this one it is very easy from here we can get mud weight this is pressure divided by this you see it this one now tvd from here equals the pressure divided by this i think it is very easy now i need you to use the calculator please you have the calculator with you uh, please uh, go to uh, question number one. Well, TVD equals 8,000 feet. Calculate mud hydrostatic pressure for each of the following mud weights. Now you have TVD and you have constant. There is no change. If you put 11 ppg, how much will be? Uh, the pressure should be 2,000, 3,000 like this. 4,000. 4,000, right? 4,000. 4,000. 4,000. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, right. Uh, what about 12 ppg? Mr. Alfon says the right one. <laughs> no problem. I do mistake here, but don't do mistake in the exam. Please. 992. Excellent, excellent. Go to uh, P twelve ppg now, please. Yes. And for and fourteen ppg and C. Forty. Forty. Five thousand. Five thousand. Eight hundred. Eight hundred and four. Excellent. A uh, fourteen ppg. Yes. It's for fourteen ppg. Yes. Fourteen ppg. How much is hydrostatic? We say for fourteen ppg. Uh, okay, no problem. For twelve and eleven. You got it, Mehmet Bey? Yes, I see. Uh, very nice. Let us see. You got these numbers? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Now, let us go to a question number two. What mud weight is required to give a pressure gradient of 0.59 PSI per foot? What? One 
Uh, how many PPG? 13.5. So this divided by 0 0.052. This pressure gradient divided by 0 0.052. If you apply formula number two, use formula number two, please. So 0 0.59 divided by 0 0.052. How much will be 10, 11 like this? Excellent. Let us see, please. 11. You round it up. Round up. 11.4. Right? Ex excellent. So 0 0.59 divided by 0 0.052. It will be 11.4. Question number three. Mud hydrostatic is 3,900 PSI at the bottom of an 8,000 feet. TVD well. What would be the pressure gradient for the mud? Pressure gradient for formula number two, right? So pressure is 3,900 divided by TVD, 8,000. How much will be? Point like this, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 like this, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let us see. 0.49 you round up right okay. you see it question number four for a question above which is this one uh, 0.49 pressure gradient uh, what is the equivalent mud weight this one so 0.49 divided by 0 0.052 how much will be mud weight Point four nine divided by point zero five two. How much will be nine point four? Right. Excellent. Uh, last question, please. Pressure gradient point five seven psi per foot. What is the hydrostatic at twelve thousand ps uh, feet TVD? What? So pressure gradient 0 0.57 times TVD 12,000. It will be hydrostatic pressure. 6.840. How much? 6.840. No. My friend, a pressure gradient is this. Hydrostatic, uh, what is hydrostatic pressure? Not 6. It should be 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So this one. Pressure gradient times TV. Yes. Six thousand eight hundred forty. Excellent. Now it is okay. Clear. Clear, my friends. We didn't. We didn't understand. Mister Hassan says the same one. Ah, really? Uh, I heard you six point six point like this. Uh, he said point. A uh, point exactly. Point. It is not point. No. Without point, <laughs> we will put ourselves in trouble if we say six point. It is six thousand. Excellent. Now this is the calculation. This is the fundamental. We can go deeper and deeper. Uh, tell you any question, my friends? Very nice. Now we we have we are five. Uh, to, uh, we are five, and we have uh, with us Mr. Uh, Huawei.
Huawei. Who is this Mr. Huawei? I don't know. Uh, no name. What is what is the name? Uh, Huawei. Taha, Taha. Ah, Mr. Taha. Good morning, Mr. Taha. How are you? Uh, if you ch- uh, fine, alhamdulillah. If you change your name, please. Uh, if you write Taha, Mr. Uh, Mr. Taha, please. Okay, I write. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm thinking nine o'clock. I will start. No problem, no problem. Now, now, uh, no problem. Uh, plus minus, but it is okay. Okay. Uh, any question till here? You started with calculations, Mr. Taha. Anyway, uh, let us move on with for yeah. With formation fluid, uh, the fluid that is available in the formation we call it formation fluid. The pressure that is available in the formation we call it formation pressure. It is very easy. There is no mix up. You see the fluid present in the pore space inside the formation of the rock we call it formation fluid. Formation uh, the pressure that is available inside the formation we call it what formation pressure it is very easy the pressure of the formation fluids we call it formation pressure so we have formation the the fluid inside it we call it formation fluids the pressure that is available inside this formation fluids what do we call it formation pressure it is very easy easy money now here we have what is formation fluid pressure you see it this is the formation fluid pressure uh, at the uh, at the end this one you see formation pressure is the fluid pressure where in the pore spaces of the formation we have in this inside the formation we have uh, fluids we we have a pressure inside this fluids we call it Formation pressure. Now, I mentioned this one. What is abnormal pressure? We have formation fluid if it is greater than the pressure gradient of the seawater. Seawater, how much is it? Who knows? Formation pressure for seawater, pressure gradient, how much? 0.465 psi per foot, right? Write it down, please. Write it down. 0.465 psi per foot. This is pressure gradient of the seawater. Now, we have uh, two limits between. We have the for, uh, the formation, uh, the fresh water pressure gradient. How much is it? 0.433, right? 0.433 psi per foot. This is for fresh water. And seawater is 0.465 psi per foot. We have to memorize these numbers. Write them down, please. So, formation uh, for uh, fresh water uh, gradient is 0.433 psi per foot. Seawater pressure gradient is 0.465 psi per foot. If we have between these two numbers, 0.433 to 0.465, we call it Normal pressure. Normal pressure. If we have it less than 0.433 for the fluid inside the formation, we have pressure gradient. If it is less than 0.433, what do we call it? Subnormal. Formation pressure. If we have it more than 0.465 psi per foot, what do we call it? Abnormal pressure. So this is the definition. So if we go to the, to the definition here, formation fluid gradient that is available in the formation is greater than the what gradient pressure gradient of the seawater. What is pressure gradient of the seawater? 0.465 psi per foot. So if it is more than that, it is abnormal. We call it abnormal. You see it. 99.99 of formation fluids are water. Now, formation water equals, what is it formation water? This one. It is 
pressure gradient. What is it? 0.465 psi per foot. You see it? This one. That I gave you now. In PPG, it is 8.9. 8.9 is, this is density. But if you multiply 8.9 times 0 0.052, if you um, try it, Mr. Mehmet Bey, 8.9 times 0 0.052, how much is it? Shall you take this number? Exactly. So this is for seawater. If you are more than it, it is abnormal. Low, uh, lower than it until 0.433, it is normal. Less than 0.433, it is subnormal. So this is the definition. If formation fluids are squeezed, then fluid pressure increases. If you increase what? The formation fluids. What will happen to the, the, the pressure of it? It will increase, right? Now, uh, we have five cases. We call them uh, abnormal pressure. What are the causes? We have five causes of this abnormal pressure. What are they? We have under compaction. We see each one of them. Uh, we have faulting. We have salt dome. We have artesian. And we have gas cap. Let us see each one of them. You see, here we have dewatering. We have soft cements here, sediments, uh, soil, sand, um, uh, silt, anything. And we have compacted sedimentary rock. This is compacted, compressed. But here with shallow, it is soft sediments. Here with depth, what will happen? To the pressure in everywhere in the world. If you go deeper, the pressure will go down or up. And temperature. Ah, uh, Mr. Mehmet Bey, if you go deeper, the pressure will go down or up. Oh. Excellent. Temperature will go down or up. Temperature, I think, uh, down. If you go down, if you go deeper, what will happen to the temperature? It will increase. Yes. The pressure gradient, uh, the pressure gradient, if you write it down with you, please, uh, in the whole world, in the whole world, every 100 meters, 3 degrees centigrade. This is the geothermal gradient in the world. So 3 degrees centigrade, each 100 watt, degree uh, each 100 meters so this is so we see if you are producing from uh, formation at three uh, three thousand meters for example what do you expect that the pressure temperature will be temperature will be about 100 right Four, three, yes, yes. Three. so so when we go down because the core of the earth what is it it is fire right it is fire so when we go to the center the temperature will increase so here look at this one what will happen here my friends we have compacted sedimentary rock here and we have soft but if it is uh, da uh, if you go deeper and you compress on it what will happen you see this one it there will be abnormal pressure below it and above, we have normal pressure. Why? Because this was uh, compacted. We pressed on it. So there will be like a barrier here. You see this barrier. So this is normal pressure. This is abnormal pressure. If you see the uh, pressure curve, this one, the pressure curve, it will be normal. This is normal. But suddenly, we go from here till here. Jump. You see it? This is jump. In this case, what will happen? We have abnormal pressure. If you have abnormal pressure, what do you expect? There will be blowout or not? You are drilling with 9 ppg mud, for example, here. Suddenly, you need to here to drill here, high pressure, 11 ppg. In this case, there will be blowout.
right? Yes. yes. So we have to take care of this. It is very critical and not easy. Now, we have, we call this one what? Sand lens. The sand lens also has what? Has high pressure. So when we come uh, drill through it, what will happen? There will be abnormal pressure inside it. This abnormal pressure can cause a blowout for us. So we have to take care of it. So here, normal pressure. Here, abnormal. But inside the abnormal, we have here sand lens. This sand lens will cause a blowout for me. What else? You see this one, we have fault now. What is fault? What is fault, my friends? Look at this formation. Uh, look at this uh, formation, you see it? And this formation, this formation. Here we have this formation, we call it sand A. It has oil and gas. What will happen? The ground or the earth will move. Some will move up and the other will stay in a place. What will happen? Look at it. You see? Some will go up, will go down, and some will go up. This is called fault. You see? This one. Look at this formation. It stays in its place. And this moves up. You see? The pressure here is the same as pressure here. Am I right? The same pressure, this one and this one. But the depth is much different. The depth here, the original, say 9,000 feet, this one. But here, the pressure, the uh, TVD may be 8,000 feet. So here we expect that we have abnormal, we have abnormal pressure here. You see it? This one. So when we drill here, there will be no problem. This one. But when we drill here, it is up, and the pressure should be like this, normal pressure. But it moved up. Why? Because there is fault. So this is as a result of the fault. This is also salt dome. You see, this is salt. We call it salt dome. Also, we can have abnormal pressure. The last case, we have it artesian. Artesian effect. What does it mean, artesian effect, my friends? Look at it. This is normal pressure at 500 feet. But this 500 feet is connected to what? To here. We have here like supporting area. This one. We call it spring. You see there is rain, there is spring. All of it is supporting this formation. It is connected with each other. This one. So, the level of this one is higher than the level of the rig by 1,000 feet. So we apply additional pressure, 1,000 feet plus this one. So we have, we drilled all, already 500 feet. We have to add to this 500 feet, we add 1,000. So extra pressure, we have 1,500 feet. If you don't understand it, I can repeat it for you. We call this one artesian effect. You see it? So we drill a, a hole here. We have formation at 500 feet. It has, say, pressure gradient uh, 0.445, uh, uh, for example, fresh water. But here we have supporting pressure. Where is it coming from? From higher area. This area is at a level 1,000 feet above the level of the drilling rig. If you add this one, this, to, the, to this level, plus you have also this 500 feet, so the total will be 1,500 feet of this water, which causes hydrostatic pressure, in addition to the normal pressure. So we call this one, what? Artesian effect. This is coming from underwater, underground water level. This is underground water level. This is potable water or drinkable water. You see this one, 1,000 feet, and we have 500 feet. 
the calculate mod weight to balance. Calculate mod weight to balance. The balance here, we have pressure gradient how much? 0.433. This is for fresh water. This is for fresh water, 0.433. So you add above it this 1,500 extra. You see? What will happen here? There will be blowout as a result of this supporting pressure, this one, resulting from 1,500 feet from fresh water. Here we have gas cap effect. Also, we have a question here. We can see it uh, that we can uh, expect high pressure. Why? Because this gas cap uh, here and we have fresh water, you see uh, seawater, this one. 0.465 psi per foot normal pressure this is normal but if you have here it is connected this to this you have to find a greater pressure in this case there will be what there will be a blowout uh, till here uh, there is any question my friends any question till here everything all are simple and uh, fundamentals we don't go deeper till now. But from now, we have to go deeper and see what is the well control. Any question, Mr. Rashid? Mehmet Bey? Hakan Bey? Mr. Mr. Taha? Murat Bey? Thank you. Ah, it is clear for you. Now, what is the principle of well control? It depends on the barrier that has either primary barrier or secondary barrier or tertiary barrier. So, what is the defi definition of a barrier? This definition comes in the exam. So, I want you to memorize it. I memorize it. So, the barrier is any device. Write it down, please. You have to memorize it. It is one row only. Maybe ten, ten words. Barrier is any device, a fluid or substance that contains, if you write down, uh, if you write, write down, it, please, it is very important, this definition. So the barrier is any device, a fluid or substance that contains well pressure, contains well pressure, and prevents it from flowing in an uncontrollable method. I will repeat it. Barrier is any device, any device, a fluid or substance, a fluid mud, substance plug, BOB, uh, packer, uh, tubing, like this, uh, that contains well pressure and prevents the flow, the fluids from flowing in an uncontrollable method. Is it clear? Now we have in drilling, we have two types. You know them, a primary barrier, which is the mud, a drilling mud. Secondary barrier, which is the BOP. The primary barrier, which is the mud, always primary barrier is the mud. We have to maintain it at all the time. It should be observed and maintained. What, does, what do we mean by observed? We have to, uh, because the well is open to the surface, right? To the atmosphere. So we have to observe it. Uh, don't uh, say that uh, it is at uh, 10 meters below the surface. No, it should be observed. So always, you pump bar one barrel, receive one barrel. Pump one barrel, so this is maintained. We maintain it circulated and observed. We see it. Uh, we don't expect that we have to see it. We see it. Do you see it uh, as a driller? You see the mud? You see it. So this is observed. Maintained, we pump one barrel, 
receive one barrel bump two barrel we receive two barrel so this is the primary so it is your eye in the way this is the mud so primary barrier this is mud hydrostatic this one what uh, so the primary barrier we call is the first line of defense always we call it first line of defense is the primary barrier or here uh, if the mud hydrostatic pressure is lost in for many reasons what shall we do we have to shut in the well after a kick has been taken how can we shut in the well we have BOP and we have chalk manifold right BOP and chalk manifold and we can then circulate the secondary barrier well, this is the blowout preventer we call it BOP blowout preventer is it clear till now uh, my friends any question now look at it please this is the we call it primary control look at this one mud hydrostatic mud hydrostatic how much is the formation pressure look at it how much is it formation pressure 4800 excellent how much is the mud hydrostatic uh, 5000 ah uh, i want you to know something in the iwc over balance should be 200 psi as a, a rule of thumb 200 psi over balance uh, this hydrostatic mud hydrostatic more than the formation pressure by 200 psi is it clear this we have to put it here in our mind the mud hydrostatic in the well bore this one should be maintained what does it mean maintain it should stay at the surface especially the driller he feels it as if his heart do you feel that uh, Hakan Bey Repeat again, please. The, uh, the mud and maintaining it at surface, it yes. will make you happy all the time. Yes. Right? Otherwise, what will happen? You will lose the control. Am I right? Hakambe. <coughs> you hear me? Yes, I, I hear you. Yeah, so if you if you lose the primary barrier, the mud, yes. then you yes. will you will lose the well. You may lose yourself also. Yes. So always we make sure that we have the mud at surface and maintained and observed. Also, we have to maintain the mud as we require. 9 ppg, 10 ppg, 11, 11.5, like this. So we have mud balance. We have to measure the density or mud weight of this uh, of this mud all the way so mud hydrostatic prevents this one prevents formation inter uh, fluids from entering to where to the well bore we prevent influx or uh, this kick we call it kick right yeah. right Second, the secondary control. What is it? If we lose the control of the mud, where, where shall we go? We have to go to the BOP, right? This is secondary barrier. What do we call it secondary barrier? It is the second line of defense. The second line of defense, we call it. This is secondary barrier. So if primary barrier is lost, the mud, we go to secondary barrier and close it. After closing it, we have kick. We have to circulate this kick out to the surface using the chalk manifold. And in this case, we have to secure the well and we retrieve the primary barrier and work as normal. Look at this one. We have kick here. What shall we do? We have to put something in. We have to close it. We uh, close the BOP. Ah, this is the BOP. After that, what shall we do? We have to circulate this influx in two ways. How many ways uh, do you use? A driller's method and wait and wait, right? We'll take them in detail here. Now, uh, this is the BOB stack. This is uh, sub C. You see it? Offshore. You see the C? 
and this is surface star blew out preventer now well control cycle a primary prevention uh, shall we take a rest my friends or what You are happy with it? Yes. I see you smiling all the time. That means uh, you are very happy. Very nice. I am happy too. Your interaction is required in the course. So, well control cycle. We have a primary. This is primary. What is it primary? The mud, right? Primary prevention. But if we lose this one and have a kick, what will happen? Look at it. Uh, we have kick. You see the kick, this one? What will happen with it? We have to shut in the well. Let us see. Ah, shut in the well. Excellent. This is secondary. After shutting in the well, what will happen? We have to circulate this kick out. Am I right? Circulate it out. Yes. Look at it. Kill the well. Circulate. Either wet and wet or drillers method. Excellent. Then in circulation or killing the well, what shall we retrieve? The primary? Primary. Yeah, barrier. This is one. Now, we are safe. Can you repeat it, Mehmet Bey? In the well control cycle? Mm. Uh, we have, yes, please. Yes. First, we have to uh, prevent the well with primary uh, method. Uh, up to the model if we don't do not uh, do it if we take the kit we have to shut down the well with secondary method especially with the shutting well uh, with BOP and uh, kill the well after the, when we kill the well uh, we will take the uh, first one it's the primary Excellent. 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 Then we can retrieve the primary barrier, which is the mud. Is it clear for all of you? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. You are a good teacher, Mehmet Bey. You are a good teacher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, uh, if we go to uh, primary, to the barrier, number of barriers, you see this is drilling and this is where intervention you see here in drilling we have double barrier protection this is the mud primary barrier and secondary barrier what BOP we agreed on that right but with well intervention we have a triple barrier protection why this is good question why in well intervention we have the well is uh, closed and live right it is live well we may have uh, 4,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 PSI. So this, the well is alive. While here, the well, the well is what? Dead. In the drilling, the well is dead. And it is open to the, to the atmosphere. While here, the well is, the, is live. In this case, we need extra barrier. So the primary barrier, this is for stripper for coil tubing. Primary barrier. The leak rate through it should be zero. We call it zero. No leak at all. Here we have secondary barrier. If this is leaking, we close BOP, secondary barrier. If secondary barrier is not holding pressure, we go to tertiary barrier, which is shear seal BOP. A clear, my friends? A clear, uh, Mr. Rashid? Hakan Bey, Mehmet Bey. Everybody is clear. Excellent, excellent. Barriers, we have uh, examples of barriers. We have, for example, primary barrier, uh, drilling fluid, completion fluid. For secondary barrier, we have BOP. Here, temporary barrier, we have uh, mud BOP, while permanent barrier, it is casing and cement. Uh, we have a physical barrier, it is a fluids, BOP, cement. While operational barriers, procedural barrier, we have uh, measuring weight, closing BOP, monitoring trip tank, and so on. This is procedural barriers or operational barrier. A closed barrier, it is a stuffing box, a grease injection head, a stripper, wireline plug, all of this. While closable barrier like BOP, Christmas tree, uh, subsurface safety valve, and so on. 
clear these my friends or not X. No, don't memorize. Don't, don't memorize them. You have to know them. You have to understand. That's it. That's it. Uh, when we need memorize, you, I tell you, you have to memorize this one or memorize that one, right? All right. Okay. Here we come to uh, test. Uh, we have a pressure test and inflow test of these barriers. So. Uh, till now, we have no question. Uh, thank you, uh, and uh, we will continue uh, after the rest. We'll take 15 minutes rest. Agree, my friends? Okay. Okay. 15 minutes, one, five minutes. Thank you, my friends. Thank you.